move this all the way towards the right, okay? Not just the point itself. Uh, why is my illustrator like, it's all your fault? Huh? Are you fu I just fucking... I've never had an illustrator crash. What the fuck? You fu I'm fucking ruined my video. I didn't even spell it. What is going on guys? It's your boy Sesso here bringing us a video here today bringing you guys an illustrate illustrate okay illustrated tutorial how to create your own cool little serif sort of logo design also I got my voice back uh, I didn't promise it last week but it came back to me about two days ago which is pretty cool um so yeah I'm gonna teach you guys how to make some cool little serif fonts um, so just in case you guys don't know the little difference between a serif and a sans serif for like food for thought kind of thing or like you, you kind of need to know this kind of thing. Um, this is more like a, this right here is more like a sans serif, right? Um, if you guys don't know what serifs are regardless, it's these little, little cool little things right here. Um, I would just call them like, I don't know, not, 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 not like a cliff, but like, I don't know, they're just, they're called serifs, so that's what they are, honestly. Um, there's just a really cool little kind of like an accent to the more sort of bolded strokes that, or not even bolded itself, but more like, you know, linear strokes that have no little accent at the end of them, right? So just in case you guys didn't know, that's kind of like the whole deal about that. Um, so yeah, I wanted to show you guys how to make logos like this, because recently I've been getting a couple clients with like some premium brands for clothing or premium brands for just really anything, honestly. So I've been doing a lot of serif fonts lately. Um and they really do justice if i think you guys really truly need to know these kind of things i know a lot of you guys in this channel here today or whatever you know when you subscribe to me and whatnot a lot of you guys are logo tutorial like you know people that come from my logo tutorials i know like 30 percent of my views come from logos so i want to give you guys a a cool little insight of how i kind of do something like this um where you can do either letter marks or full-on you know of course hand lettering um we're not hand lettering, but you know, typeface, you know, lettering. But regardless, I, I think it's it's very important to show you guys at least how to do it and how to execute it, I believe, and just give you guys little tips that I kind of do to make it even look even cooler than it could be, right? So, uh, yeah, with that being said, this is a, a double A concept here. I think if you look at this, it kind of looks, you know, it looks, I don't know, like, it just looks like it's sort of loyalty. You got to see trust. I have one word written down here. Oh, I put quality. I put quality, loyalty, and trust. If so, what I feel like you look at when you see Serif logos, when it, whether it's like a like a brand of like, I don't know. If you look at this, you can personally say, if this was like a lawyer, bro, right? If the lawyer came up with you with this logo right here in front of your face, you'd be like, all right, you know what I mean? But if it came up with that, you know, this thing right here is like, this is my A logo. This it gives you a card with this. You'd be a little bit, you know, eh, you know, so anyway. That's the whole deal about that. So I'm gonna show you guys exactly how to do it right now, and uh, let's go and get this thing going. All right, homie. So I'm gonna give you guys a nice little walkthrough of how I created my personal little, uh, I guess, serif A that I kind of made for this video here today. So I'm gonna go ahead and just show you guys the whole walkthrough of this whole thing. I'm gonna kind of keep this here for one second and one second only, just to figure out, figure out, figure out how I'm gonna kind of like lean and shear the the angle, so I'm gonna have a at least somewhat close to the same angle that I had before. Um. So, of course, I'm going to be using the rectangle tool here. I'm going to be on a new layer right here. Rectangle tool, having your fill turned on, of course, because we're going to, of course, have this rectangle be filled in. And we're just going to simply make a nice size, a good size rectangle for now. I'm going to kind of even it out with this one over here. Now, what I would do here is I would just select the actual rectangle itself. Now, if you want to, you can press A on your keyboard or just click over here in the top left direct selection tool. And what you want to do is you want to basically click on just these first top two. So if you just want to highlight the first top two shapes here, or the, the points here for the shape. If you just want to, if you guys don't know what the whole shearing is, or if you guys know Photoshop or like skew or whatnot, we're just kind of like tilting this on an angle, of course, and then making it a little more easier for us to handle um, without, of course, like doing you know, maybe like rotating like this and then make this flat. You want to kind of like guess that or you want to like, you know, kind of even it out like that. There's a way easier way. I would just honestly just take the two points on the top, hold shift, Move it over towards the left. The reason why you're holding shift is because while you're holding shift, it keeps on the same exact line as long as, long as you're not crazy. As you can see, I have to make really dramatic movements to change the, uh, the actual line. So this is pretty good for me right here. I believe that's a pretty even angle to this one over here. Maybe a little less about right there. All right, so that's pretty okay. So I'm going to hide this now. So then I have this A here. I'm going to quickly just kind of like make a little more shorter, just like so. 
and now cool so i have my little rectangle sheared now what i'm going to do is i'm going to hold alt and shift if you guys know what the reason why of course if you hold alt and you select on a shape itself and you just want to click uh, you can just move it around just like so you can make duplicates just like that if you guys want to however i'm going to be holding alt and moving over to the left while also holding shift because you guys know it keeps on that same exact line and once i can let it go just like so i can make sure if i move it over again it'll be in the same exact line in the same exact position so that way when i go ahead and right click on this shape here i can go to transform and then reflect and we're going to just take this and just reflect on a vertical which will flip it nice symmetrical for us uh to make an a so i'm now going to please god okay i'm going to just go ahead and take this this point right here move it over towards the right and kind of connect it with this uh, point over here so i'm gonna say to myself right there is pretty dang good now if you didn't you, if you saw mine mine kind of like snapped um if you guys don't have like snap to point i believe it's in where is it like view snap to pixel and point i personally have on i don't have to have pixel really i can just have point itself um but if yours isn't snapping the way mine is i would definitely tell you guys that if you guys are not used to kind of having it perfectly on a point put on snap to point it's very easy as, as you guys saw view snap to point just like so and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just click on both of these uh, uh, little shapes right here by holding shift, right? If I just select one, hold shift, I can select the other while having the other one still highlighted. I'm going to go ahead and use the shape builder tool. If you guys are new to Illustrator, it's basically a tool in which if you press, uh, press shift M on your keyboard, right? This is the shape builder tool. This shape here, basically you can see these lines here. It's kind of making almost like polygons or segments, you can say, in these little paths here. We have its own little individual shapes. But if I go ahead and just unclick it, if I move it, I'm not moving individual shapes right now. But if I were to just so you guys can see, if you hold alt, you can see my little uh, my little mouse has a little minus button now next to it. If I hold alt, if I let go, it has just a plus button. But if you guys, of course, think about it, if you just click on that shape with that plus button, if I just click off again really quickly and click now over here, it took that shape that I actually clicked with the shape builder tool and made it into its own separate shape. So what we're going to be doing though is using the minus, which is of course negative, kind of like, you know, kind of getting rid of it, subtracting it. So we're going to hold alt, click over here and click over here, just like so to make ourselves a nice little A here. Now, in my, uh, I guess you would say my example of my serif font here, usually you kind of have different weights, uh, meaning like thicknesses. You see here, I kind of have like different weight here. So I have a very, very sort of thick uh, stroke line here with an interruption with this little stroke line in the middle, um, or not in the middle, more towards leading to the right. Um, and I also have a different like little kind of weight or thickness of stroke here for like the inner side of the A. So usually you'll find yourself maybe focusing on that. So if you guys wanted to, I would probably say you can probably move this and like this. Oh, I'll just do this, right? Kind of split it in almost half. So I use the shape builder tool again, just like so. You can do something like that, right? So that right there, that's kind of what I mean by different kind of weights. Um, but for my example, I personally did not do that because I kind of did this little example, which I'll show you guys in a second. Kind of like fo focus on kind of making it look like almost like a negative space to kind of figure out that this is right here there's like an imaginary line coming down right because we have this pointing up this right here pointing towards this little other point here we kind of cut it off it's not too difficult to think about it but if you guys can hopefully kind of imagine in your head that this right here it's almost like a nice little uh secondary stem of the a coming down the left um but we didn't have that but if you guys want to keep this i would definitely suggest the fact that you use different weights and different thicknesses but for me like i said for my example here I'm going to leave it so that it is one nice, you know, uniform thickness. We're going to get rid of it in a second anyway. Okay, so now that I think this is okay, it's a little bit on the thicker side than I would normally like, but it's pretty okay, you know what I mean? Okay, so I'm going to take the rectangle tool once again, right? So I'm going to go ahead and say to myself, right down here, I'm just going to go ahead and make a nice little like make sure this is on that line we'll make it a little more thicker for now because we can go ahead and subtract most of it uh, if we just simply if once we're done with it we'll kind of like figure it out if it needs to be a little less or a little more when it comes to like the height it, i would say so right about there's a pretty good little little thing right there and i'm going to take the same exact shape hold alt and shift again of course holding alt to make a duplicate holding shift to keep it on that same line and i'll keep it right around there now we have ourselves a little bit of serifs coming on right so you can see that we're getting that little look to it which looks pretty good so far but it's it doesn't have that little sort of curve that most serif fonts or serif you know logos have right here now there's one of two ways of doing this i would believe the easiest way to do it is the second method i'm going to show you but the first method just in case you guys really want to do it is you can just use your pen tool right you can just use your pen tool and just start on the line itself Take your pen tool, click on the line over here, right? And then just simply to make a nice little curve for yourself. Oops, that's disgusting. Take this little uh, extended point anchor point here, right? You can go around like so. You can do it something like that, right? 
that's fairly simple honestly it's not too like difficult it's also kind of like you know it's it's quick as well honestly but what i would like to do is right if you guys you see this little pathfinder table i have up at all times usually because I, I usually use it all the time if you guys don't have it it's under windows pathfinder and what this is basically going to do if i just simply like i'm going to do right now highlights all of these shapes here together um or i'm just going to do one side for once right so i'm going to just click on this shape here right this little right hand little stem here and this little bottom stem they just kind of made for the serif here i'm going to take these two shapes shift click on them which is going to basically select both of them and I'm going to just click right here in the Pathfinder Unite right here. As you can see, it makes it one nice little path. Now, if you guys did it right, I'm pretty sure there's no way you can kind of mess this up, really. But if you just click here, you can see these little, uh, I believe, I forgot when this came out for Illustrator, but maybe about two years ago. I really don't know, honestly. Um, this is kind of like a little curve. Uh, I would call, I don't know what the actual name for it is. I would just call it a point, a point curve, right? So what happens is mostly on every little curve that has a very, very sharp edge, it should even have on the inside here. You can see that right there, right? Little sharp edges, always going to have an ability to curve them. So while you have these two uh, actual shapes combined, you can just simply click on one of these points right here. It'll have this little circle for you guys. You simply just take this circle and then just drag it right up. Now, I find this a lot more easier for more than one reason, because it can be perfect. You will make sure it, it will always be perfect, right? There is no sort of um, indication where it's going to be slanted on a wrong angle or anything like that, because this is done in Illustrator program and the technology in Illustrator itself. So you can damn well sure, you know, kind of like make sure the curve is on the right angles and stuff. So I'm going to do the same exact thing over here to this one. Now, just in case you guys not know, if I just quickly go back for a second before I did the actual ones, if I wanted to, I can click on both this angle here and I believe I can click on this angle here and then move them both simultaneously to make sure I kind of get it on the even on each side as you can see it's pretty much just like so and now it's perfectly even on each side and you have to worry about it so if I just click here and click shift click over here as well just like both of them I can just focus on one and what's gonna happen is the other one is gonna be quite perfect now I think that's pretty good I think this needs to be a little less like maybe about there and I think that's pretty dang good. So now let me kind of like think about it. If I wanted to, I can just kind of give you guys like a nice little different weight in the middle here. So we kind of have like a little serif looking little A right there. I think it looks pretty cool, right? So it looks pretty cool now, but for me, I just thought there was something really cool to do. And I kind of like figured out some different styles and that's kind of doing this little sort of indication that it's missing. And there's still like this little fill area for this, whatever letter you're actually doing, right? So I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead Get rid of that because I don't want that here. What we're going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and kind of get rid of this like area right here for now, right? So I'm going to just click and make a very, very simple line with just my like my pen tool. I'm just going to highlight everything here because I'm going to make sure it's going to split here and it's going to split, excuse me, <clears throat> split right here on this line that it is created. So if I press Shift M, Shape Builder Tool, just like so, make sure I split it just like that because we, now we have this completely got rid of, right? So you can do something like this as well. There's different ways, of course, split your areas. There's different ways to sort of uh, indicate where, you know, there's just like, you know, this, like, how do you call it? Like an imaginary or or inferred, what's the word I'm looking for? I think it's like inferred, close to inferred, whatever, but there's an inferred line that's right here, right? So for me, I found this little cool little trick that you can do to make it look something like this. Now it's a little tricky. I even don't even know if I did it right the first time. However, what I actually did was, I said to myself, I'm gonna make a nice little oval here. Now, if you guys know what letter, I'm, I just clicked on, I pressed L on my keyboard, which bring up the uh, kind of like the rectangle tool, but it kind of like went down into the ellipse tool. If you guys didn't know that already, I press L on your keyboard. So I'm going to just simply make a nice little ellipse here. Now I'll make it fairly big size, just like so. I'm going to put on a nice little angle here. Now I'm going to go ahead and kind of get as close to... See right here, like this little snap to point and stuff. I might need to turn this off right now. So snap to pixel, snap to point. I'm going to turn both of those off. That way I can freely move it, just like so. Now I'm going to figure out if... I believe that's pretty okay. Let's move this again. Like right about there, I would say. Now, if you have this little empty space here, that's perfectly fine. That just means you have to fill that in with the, the shape builder tool again. I think that's pretty good. So I'm gonna make a nice little, what I kind of like wanted to aim for, I'll do it over here and explain it more in detail. If I just reflect this one over here, I think this is gonna have to be a little smaller. And also what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change these two colors so I can actually see what they are, uh, I actually see what's going on here right just change it to a different color just like so now i'm gonna make sure 
I think this one should be more of a circular kind of thing here so I can get a nice point in a direction because this is facing more to the left. If I make this one a perfect circle, this will actually go ahead and kind of like point in the direction, sort of top right up kind of thing. So if I say to myself, if I put this right about here, this will just have to be a little bit bigger. I'm holding shift to make sure it keeps a perfect circle right about there. So, so I'm going to do is I'm going to line up sort of like the bottom of this circle here to the point right here, right? So what we'll point out referring to is this point right here. Drag this down and kind of make sure it's perfectly right there. Now I'm just going to go ahead and say I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. Hit that right there and this should still be on the point. It's a little bit off. There we go. Does that work out? Okay, so I'm kind of like going in circles here. Let's just make this one bigger. Okay, why are you going down and not up? There we go. There we go. Or not. There, that's okay. So if I need to, I can go ahead and just get rid of some things, but I think it's okay. I just want to kind of make sure that I get, I want to definitely get it the way I had it previously. It's a little trial and error, a little process here. But what if I just go ahead and just make this just a lot bigger than it needs to be? That way I can just automatically have it interfering with that over there. So when I make this on this point right here, That'll work just like so. So a little, kind of like a little thought process, but hopefully that'll kind of help you guys out when you're figuring it out. Cause I personally, like I said, I just, my first time kind of sort of like doing this little, little style point here. But as you can see, I kind of, if I just even intercept these two circles here, it's perfectly fine no matter what, because I still get this nice little point at the end, no matter what, because of course two circles still gonna combine it to a point just like so. But this little area, like I was talking about right here, that's missing, that's perfectly fine. What I can do here, I can just do it right now, is I can shift click on both this shape here, right? This little A and this little uh, reddish tone circle that we got going on. Shift M my keyboard, and we can fill this in by just simply just clicking with the Shape Builder tool, just like so. If I move that, it'll be filled in for you guys, just like so, right? So once I do this, just like that, I can then hover over everything here because I want to make sure I can see all of my interactions so I can see all where I'm going to be cutting at. If I just press Shift M again, I can get rid of this, get rid of that, get rid of this, get rid of this, get rid of this, and get rid of that. And now we have our little inferred little sort of directional A thing here. So the cool thing about this is, like I said before, if this was too high for you, this little area right here, like this little, you know, from this point to this point, was if it's a little too high, you can just take a nice little rectangle and just cut it right through. If you want to, let's say I'll do it right about out there because I, I kind of like the height it's at right now. But if you guys don't want to, use the Shape Builder tool. I don't know what that is. And then just, you know, hold Alt and get rid of it. So it can even be even more skinnier, right? So that, I think that looks pretty damn sexy if I'm honest with myself. I'm going to go ahead and just combine all these shapes that are in here just in case there's, there's one little hidden shape right there. I'll combine it now together. That way, when I go ahead and just sort of move this as I want to, I want to move this down here. I'll give it a fair spacing. I'll say right about there. Now, if I don't know if this is on the perfect angle here, what I personally like to do to check it, which is probably not the best idea, I, I'm pretty sure you can hold shift and get it on the diagonal line as well. But if you guys want to, if you guys kind of follow, um, what I did was look up here. As you can see, it's not quite there yet. This is definitely not ideal. However, it does work. And I would just recommend if you kind of want to just still do it right. I'm guessing right about here. If I zoom in again, that's all good. So if I just click over here, and shape builder tool get rid of that get rid of that now we can definitely make sure that this is all on the same exact line and now for the kind of like the last but not least here make ourselves a nice little different weight press m on our keyboard for that rectangle nice little different size thickness oh i would kind of also make sure it can make it a little more uniform so what i would do is i would kind of copy the uh the height of this right here right so it's not quite there yet just make it a little bit more just like so there we go I'm gonna take that shape now and throw it right in here for that little sort of inferred line. There's like a little crossbar for the A. And I would say that is a pretty damn good looking representative of two little A's going on. Um, it's a little bit too skinny, but you know what I mean? Like if I, I would honestly make it a little more thicker, just like so, which means the kind of the bottom part of the serif maybe needs to be a little thicker as well. But for the sake of the tutorial, I think that's pretty dang good. And there is our really cool custom A. So. Honestly, guys, it's a very, very fun sort of like almost like a like a collage project if you think about it. Now, for me, I didn't you know you can even say this is one A itself, right? No matter what, there's an A right here, there's an A right here, so you can call it double A. But for me, this is gonna even be just a letter A mark itself in its own territory, I guess you can say. But hopefully, you guys understood the whole tutorial and really understood that this is a very, very cool 
sort of like I would really embrace the fact that you need to at least understand how to do this because you're definitely going to find clients along the way who are looking for a premium brand and they don't know the words how to describe what they want but most likely they're going to be looking for a serif typeface or even a serif uh, letter concept or excuse me um, like lettering itself right so hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial here today hopefully I taught you guys something hopefully I opened your eyes to some inspiration to something with you know serif fonts and whatnot or serif lettering um I'm just going to go ahead and just quickly say thank you guys so very much. We hit 78K over the week, and I just appreciate that very, very much. We're very, very close to 80K. So uh, just for the sake of the tutorial, let's just hit like, you know, 250 likes in like 24 hours. I don't know. Is that possible? I really don't know. But I really, I really just, I just thank you guys so very much, honestly. And also thank you guys very much on the support on last week's video. You guys bear with my voice, and that's that's a deal because it was like, I didn't know how to talk. So, yeah. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and just get going now. So it's, it, oh, dang it. It went to 20 minutes. I apologize, but I want to make it short. But I also wanted to make it informative as always guys hope you guys do understand hope you guys enjoyed today's video if as always guys don't forget to leave a like on the video don't forget to comment down anything you want to see me do and also don't forget to follow me on twitter at sysohq you can follow all these little updates when i go live uh when i want to live stream itself you know kind of thing so hope you guys under just enjoy your day you know i'm gonna go enjoy my weekend i finally get my car fixed on monday if you're following my twitter my car was hit and ran you know, kind of thing. So yeah, I'm going to go. I'm having a fairly good weekend. I, I have a lot of work to do though, but uh, hope you guys you do as well. Stay busy. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to get, I'm just going to go. I'm just going to go. Okay. Don't forget to keep smiling, stay positive and stay freaking productive guys. Productive guys. <laughs>